the lovers, Victoria here and you're watching my books with me. Today I'm bringing you my first review video for 2017 and that is for Frostblood by Ellie Blake, the first book in the Frostblood saga. This book came out on the 10th of January and I finished it on the 9th um, and that should be today, the 10th, if I edit this and upload it today. But um, I just finished this book, it was fantastic and let me tell you all about it. So our story follows Ruby, who is a fireblood, and she has the power to control and create fire and heat. Um, and she it lives in a world where her people have been nearly wiped out. She lives in this land called Tempesia, I think that's how you say it, um, and that is dominated by frostbloods. Um, and most of her people have either been killed or they have been able to flee to Sad. Sad Sadesia, I think that's how you say it. Ruby has been told has been taught her entire life to keep her um, abilities secret because it is a crime in Tempesia. However, one day her village is raided and her mother killed when it is discovered that she is a fireblood and soldiers take her away to a prison. She stays there for a couple of months and then she is broken out by two Frostblood rebels who want to give her freedom in exchange for killing the Frost King. From there she is taken to an abbey to live with some monks and she is trained by the wise brother Thistle and the mysterious Arcus how to harness and use her abilities because she's never had any proper training. The plan is that when Summer Solstice comes around, the day in which uh, Ruby's powers are at their strongest, she will be smuggled into the Frost Palace to kill the Frost King. Ruby fears that her powers aren't going to be strong enough because the Frost King is one of the most powerful Frostbloods in the kingdom. However, when she is captured from the Abbey and taken to the palace, she is put. Uh, she finally comes face to face with the Frost King and realizes that she definitely probably and realizes she probably won't have the power to stop him because he is a lot more powerful than anyone really thought. So as Ruby is trying to stay alive in the palace long enough to think of a plan, the king has other plans for her, some plans that will plunge the world into darkness and cause her to lose those that she now holds dear. This book had me hooked from the very first page and I did not want to stop reading once I reached the end. The characters and the story and the world had me hooked and gripped and there were, I managed to read I think half of the book in one night and I was trying to not fall asleep while reading. I was pushing away sleep but I eventually succumbed to it. Um, but it was just a fantastic book that I did not want to put down. I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. The world building in this book is so beautiful and I think it's one of my favourite parts of the book why I love it so much. Like the world of Tempesia itself sounds beautiful and I, I can imagine it really well but what I really loved was that Ellie Blake created such a vast and rich history and mythology for this world that she just wove seamlessly into the story. Um, in a way that was so interesting to read and I really loved those passages where she did talk about um, like the mythology and things like that and it was just written into the story so well that it didn't seem like she was just trying to force this information onto us. It was just done really beautifully and it was so interesting. She's thought so meticulously about how this world has been created and how um, things have happened in the past to um, affect what's happening in the book today. And I really liked that and I'm really hoping that we get to see more of that in the next two books in the series because it is definitely one of the aspects that I really enjoyed and just really put me into the world so much better than just being told what the world looked like kind of thing. What what I loved was when it came to the mythology of it, like the, the gods in the story, it really felt like I was actually reading a story based on particular gods, which I suppose it kind of is. Um, Ellie obviously took elements from different um, myth, uh, from different mythologies um, to create these gods, but it definitely felt like that these were real gods and I could go pick up a history book and then read about them. I really loved it. And I think if you're someone who really appreciates um, intricate world building then I think you're gonna really love it. The other aspect I really loved about this book was our heroine Ruby. She's such a strong and independent character and even when she's weak and broken and actually needs someone she pushes them away until she can no longer do that where she has to just sit, where she just has to um, sit back and realize no I do need help um, which I suppose that can be seen as a good or a bad thing, but I just think it shows she's very strong-willed. And especially because she is surrounded by Frostbloods. They are the sworn enemies of her people for hundreds of years. She's the reason why her people have been wiped out or have been sent fleeing. Um, and she wants to be, she doesn't want to have to rely on them for anything. But she eventually opens herself up to trust them. And she actually ends up seeing the good 
in them when um, you know she didn't think that would be possible she didn't think it'd be possible to see the good in her enemies and she can even see the good in them when they don't want to see it when they don't want her to see it themselves and there are of there is of course a love story in this and I really love that and I love the way that the I love the way Ruby and that character I don't really want to spoil who it is because it's just really nice to read about it. Um, Ruby and that character sort of opened up to one another, uh, but they were still very reluctant about it because, you know, it's really hard to form trust in this world when anyone can betray you, especially to Ruby. So what I did also love about the love story is that it doesn't fe focus heavily in the book. There are probably two main parts where it is the focus. Um, and in the end it does become an important element of the story but for the most part of the book it's not really there it's hinted at you can sort of see where it's going but it's not like overly lovey-dovey and romantic it's just something that happens as these characters work together and I really liked that so if you're someone who doesn't really like romance being at the forefront of the story I think you're gonna like this it's definitely not at the forefront until it gets right to the end where it does become an important element in how the story plays out but um, I was really surprised that it wasn't such a main focus, that we were mainly focusing on Ruby and her journey on how to become stronger, how to um, control her powers and how to build up the strength in order to try and defeat the Frost King. And of course there are twists, turns and some revelations throughout the book, some of which I didn't really see coming. Maybe I had, maybe I would have if I'd paid a little bit more attention. Well, some of which I didn't really see coming. I don't know if that was just me not picking up on it or just not really reading between the lines. I don't really know. Um, but they were really good. They kept me gripped. They pulled me into the story even further, which I didn't think was possible, especially near the end where some things were being revealed and I didn't think that um, I could be hooked anymore. But it was so good and they worked really well for the story and I'm so intrigued to see where the story will go from here. One thing that really surprised me was the ending, not because I didn't see it coming, well, I mean, I sort of didn't, um, because it doesn't end with a big shock and it doesn't end with a cliffhanger that has you impatiently waiting for book two. In fact, it was sort of the opposite. A lot of loose ends were tied up, sort of. Um, a lot of loose ends were tied up, sort of. Um, but I feel like if this book was just tweaked slightly, it could have been a standalone. It might have been a little bit longer, but I feel like... It could have been a standalone and at the end everything was sort of calm and peaceful and everything was sort of in its place and while there is some obviously major questions about what's going to happen to these characters I don't feel so anxious and stressed waiting for book two um, and I think I kind of liked that because I don't know where the story is going to go from here there is nothing well, I mean, I have, I don't know where the story is going to go from here. There are hints and you can probably think of ways where the story is going to go, but because it is so open, because we were left so calmly and sort of finished, sort of, I feel like Ellie Blake can take this story absolutely anywhere. The only hint that we have for the next two books are the titles. The next one being Fireblood and the third and final one being Dark Blood. And I mean, that gives you some sort of hint about where the story is going to go, but we don't know what these characters are going to face. And I am excited and I'm kind of nervous and I'm intrigued and I cannot wait for book two, um, which, by the way, is coming out in September. This book just came out and the sequel is already coming out this year. That is exciting. I am so pumped. I cannot wait. This book, um, I gave it five out of five stars. It was a fantastic way to start this year. It is a fantastic debut novel. I can't wait to see where this story goes. I also can't wait to see what other work Ellie Blake brings out in the future. The way she's written this book was beautiful and I can't wait to see what else she does, where she takes this series. If you love fantasy and you love rebellion, then you are definitely going to love Frostblood. This has been targeted for fans of Red Queen and the Throne of Glass series and while I haven't read the Throne of Glass series yet, I have read the Red Queen series and I can definitely see the similarities that they are going for and I can definitely vouch that if you love Red Queen and if you are hooked by that series then you are going to love this one as well. This is a must read book this year so go and get Frostblood guys because it was so good. I highly recommend it. Um, really I can't speak more highly of it. I really enjoyed it. I was hooked the entire way through and I am now just anxiously and 
now I am just patiently waiting for book two and I'm actually so glad we don't have to wait till next year I really hope the date isn't pushed back at all but everywhere I've seen it said September so I'm hoping September it's going to be a good birthday month for me because I'm soon as I get my hands on this book I'm going to just sit down and consume it that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've read, if you've been lucky enough like me to read Frostblood early, let me know your thoughts on it. And if you're excited, then definitely go out and get it and let me know your thoughts when you do get around to reading it or your thoughts from what you've heard so far about it. Um, I'll leave a link to my written review of this book if you want to go check that out, plus links where you can go purchase it. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.